Welcome to those who are joining us on Zoom. You are in so many places, different places. We're glad that we can gather in these new ways together. And wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever you come with, wherever you are going, you are seen, you are heard, and you are welcome. And you already belong. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked on this land, on their own land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We acknowledge these lands upon which we worship as the ancestral, cultural, traditional, and unceded lands of the Wabanaki Confederacy, of the Indakana people. We commit ourselves to the work of dismantling the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism. constantly reacting and we still have more reacting to go we didn't really see COVID coming and each twist and change has been hard we've all found ways to make the best of a bad situation and now we have to admit that we are not the same people that we were at the beginning of 2020 we may grieve some of our losses yet we also have the opportunity to rethink a lot of what we assumed Rethinking is exactly what God calls us to each day. See what it is but for us in new ways and rethink our assumptions and seeing the world anew. I will be who I will be was the name that God gave to Moses and who God is for us today and every day. Let's worship and let's celebrate. And if you're able, please stand and join together in Gather Us In.
pray. Gracious God, indeed, you have gathered us in, not just to this place, but every place we are, all the places that gather with us this morning, all the people that gather anywhere in any place, all people, God, even when they are alone, are gathered in you. May we see that and realize that and feel that again today so we live that in every single moment of our lives together. All this we ask in your name. Amen. If you're standing, you may be seated. We're going to talk about getting ready preparing ourselves for this rethinking that we need to do now. And um, I'll have to admit, when I saw this poem, um, not only the poem, but the, the poet, Carl Sandburg, had a bit of a flashback. I did a paper in fifth grade on Carl Sandburg. <laughs> I'm from Illinois, and he wrote a lot about Chicago so, and Illinois. But how simple, that's one thing I've always loved about Carl Sandburg. Um, he reminds me of the farmers of actually my grandfather, one of my grandfathers. Um, I, I don't know which wrote, writer said this, I think it was a poet that, um, maybe it was Wendell Berry, that it seems as if this farmer had only so many words and when he used them up, he would die. Um, and uh, I think you've probably known people like that, people of very few words, but good words. And, and Carl Sandburg reminds me of that kind of poet. He picks his, word careful, picks his words carefully. But when he has to be ready, this isn't just, you know, the New York City frisk that we used to do. Do I have my, my, uh, my subway pass? Do I have my keys? Do I have my wallet? Do I have my purse? Do I have my bag? You know, we all do that kind of frisk. This is a big ready. This is, are we ready? for what life is, and that life is more than we know. And this is what we as people of faith get to do all the time. There's a lot of details we have to do granted, right, that we think about. But we come and gather together to think about the big picture stuff, to think about the long term, the before us and after us, and not just the details of dates or events or something like that, but the grand scheme on what this means for us to live lives in this way. And Carl calls us to that with this poem, to be ready, but to be ready in three ways, be land ready, be sea ready, and be sky ready. And I, as I read these, as I read these a few days ago, I thought this is the way that God helps us to be ready, is to give us this land and sea and sky and think beyond just these mortal bodies we have. So let's join together with land and sea and sky. And if you would, ground yourself with your feet on whatever ground you are on and your seat in whatever seat you have chosen today. And find your breathing. Be land ready, for you shall go back to land. Be sea ready, for you have been nine-tenths water, and the salt taste shall cling to your mouth. Be sky ready, for air, air has been so needful to you and you shall go back, back to the sky.
loving God, you whom we call the Eternal One, the one with no beginning and end. You hold all within you, all land, all sea, all sky. You hold us. God, may we know that your love has no end, that we see it in land, sea, and sky, and we can live that out each day. Be with us as we live into the fullness of our lives and our lives together in you. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Teach me to stop and listen. Teach me to center down. Teach me the use of silence. Teach me where peace is found. Teach me to hear you calling. Teach me to search your word. Teach me to hear in silence things I have never Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you. And indeed, I just want to thank the choir for getting back together and doing this. We've got new people in here every, also, too. It's just so wonderful. Thank you for, and thank you, everyone, for understanding the movement that we have to do to spread everybody out, too, so they can sing. But we're so glad. All right. Children, can you come on forward? How's that? Sit up here. Do you remember doing that? Some of you have gotten a lot bigger since the last time you sat up there. There are a lot of long legs up here now. This is fabulous. Can we move the fern? Is that what we have to do? Well, move the fern. There's space there. There's space on the floor and wherever you want to be. Well, welcome back. I'm trying to find the right place to stand here so they can see you too. But welcome back. I know some of you have been here on and off during the summer, too. I've seen some of you on Zoom. Oh, yeah. But it's just so glad to have you back and to reconnect with everybody and see everybody. Yeah? Yeah. Did you do any preparation to come this morning? You probably got to find your mask, right? Yeah, I did too. I had a, I had, I've been using a lot of them, but I knew I wanted, if you don't have one of these, we'll get you one of these. I knew I wanted to have my dotty mask, is what we're calling them, because a bunch of us all have these on, because they're the church logo too, right? I had to find that. I had, a, I had to do some preparation. I had to write a sermon. Uh, you guys aren't going to hear that, but that's all right, right? And I, even this morning, the last piece of preparation I did this morning was run to the store and get balloons, I forgot to get balloons yesterday, and I want to make sure you guys had balloons, and there's enough for one for each of you on your way after church, okay, after you've been to faith exploration. But there's a lot to go on. The choir had a practice. They had a practice for a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, to do that, they, and they've got more practicing because they've got more songs to sing in the weeks to come. It always takes a lot, and you can see we, we've done new things. How many knew that we had a t big TV up here? Yeah, yeah, we've had it for a while up here, but now you guys can see who's on Zoom, can't you? Yeah, look up to the camera up there and everybody wave to the folks on Zoom, okay? <laughs> That's how you do it, like they're waving back, yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of prep. I mean, you can see Tom back there with the sound and Glennis back there. I was even back there trying to plug the computer in this morning the right way. There's always a lot to prepare. Did you prepare to go to school? What'd you do? You got your backpack ready, right? I didn't go this morning. No, not this morning, right? What'd you do, Minji? I basically prepared to eat breakfast. Oh, that's a good thing because we all need a good breakfast to go to school, don't we? I ate breakfast too. Did you? Oh, good. Fallon, what'd you do? Um, I got my, my masks ready. Yep. Yeah, we have to have a lot of them now, don't we? We have to have spares even at school. I got school supplies. School supplies, that's a good one. I got school supplies and I'm not even going to school. <laughs> I love school supplies. They're always on sale. I bought crayons and lots of notebooks. I did, it's true, it's true. Big, two big bags of stuff I love so much, right? But we even have to prepare because we're doing things in a whole new way now, aren't we here? Yeah, and you guys got to wear masks, but you'll have, have faith exploration still and all that. But that's a good thing. Because then we can think through and say, hmm, what did we do before that maybe wasn't so good? Or it just had gotten a little old, or we didn't really like it, but we didn't say anything. Have you ever thought of something like that? Yeah, I know Eric does things differently now, our piano player. He used to do a lot more at the beginning of church. Now, because of the way we record and everything like that, we all wait um, f f uh, it, when we start recording, he does a piece of music, and then one thing that we do, that usually we just talk over, but we're getting better at this, is his postlude, which is the last piece of music he plays, you guys aren't usually here, we all sit down and listen now. Because we could do that, especially when we were all on Zoom. Well, we're all sitting anyway, we might as well listen, right? And we're like, wow, he really plays fun music, you know? <laughs> right? So we, we listen. But God wants us to prepare every day too and say, what are those things that are good that we're doing? Like, where are we really kind to people? And where do we remember to do things? And what are some of those things that we do that probably aren't so good and we need to get rid of? You got a few of those maybe? Yeah, we think of those, don't we? But God doesn't say, I don't like you until you get rid of that. That's what, God never says that. God says, I love you always and I'm gonna help you. 
okay? And that's what we remember to do, and that's why we read the stories and and talk about the stories too, because it reminds us that people work hard at this stuff, and it's a good thing, and we gotta be ready to do that. All right, let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that we're back. We can see each other, we can be with each other, and we can remember the stories and how much people love us. God, be with us as we think about the things we do, what we need, and what we don't need. And help us in all of that to remember how much you love us. All this we ask in your name. Amen. All right. Y'all can head out with Misty, okay? Woo! You've got big kids. starts again too. Thank you, John. John doesn't just, you know, go take a break for a little while. Um, John goes into the kids and sings with them for a little while, and you'll see him duck back in, but that is so wonderful. Thanks, John, even though you can't hear us. (laughs) Our scripture reading this morning are from two places. First, from Deuteronomy, some, um, or from Isaiah, actually. Um, Yes, from Isaiah first, and then from Deuteronomy. I want to get to the the Moses passage right away. Um, And the Isaiah 40 passage I think we know um, some of you will start humming that from the Messiah, um, comfort, comfort my people. Or if we have a tenor here, they might break out. Isn't that the tenor solo or something? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, and then but good to be reminded at that of this piece and this uh, beautiful um, uh, conversation, really. It feels like there's three voices here sometimes. Um, and then we'll go into what Moses was saying to the people as they were getting to the edge of Canaan and getting ready to enter this, but knowing that Moses was not going to go in with them, that his life was going to be over, and that that was uh, the way the story's told. It was because of a lot of things that happened during that, but that Moses would get the people to the edge and prepare them, but they, he wouldn't walk in with them. Let's listen for God's words to us today. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all the separation that she lived out. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the, high, the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all the people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Then a voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the the word of our Lord God will stand for it. Ever. Get you up on a mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up and do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, for God's arm rules for God. God's reward is within God. 
and God's recompense before God. God will feed God's flock like a shepherd, and God will gather the lambs in God's arms and carry them in God's bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. And then from Deuteronomy. The word is very near to you. It's, it's in your mouth, it's in your hearts for you to observe. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I'm commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in God's ways and observing God's commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you will live and become numerous and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but if you are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live loving the Lord your God, obeying God, holding fast to God, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. May God bless these words to our living. The last 18 months, we have been reacting. So much new, there's so many tentative decisions that have been in front of us that have need to be made. I even said to someone the other day, I'm reading the daily blog and the list for the Gorham schools as to how many cases are in that school every day. Because I know I may need to make a decision quickly. I'm still reacting. And while we've had maybe some time to reflect, usually not much time because there's something else we have to react to, right? It has slowed down a bit and we know more and we have more hope. The kids' vaccine is coming. I've been telling myself December so that when it comes in October, I throw a party, okay? But we have hope. I, I do, I have to tell you, I make this joke to anyone. When someone says, you know, how are the people in your church doing with this? I said, well, all the parents send their kids to school with one sleeve rolled up. And they're just waiting. If it comes, just, just shoot them right now. Just don't even wait. Yeah, that's it, right? Just get it in there, right? And I said, that's how my congregation's doing. That they're willing to do this and, and masking and doing what they, what they can for each other. But our work isn't finished, not just because those rolled up sleeves for our kids um, aren't, aren't, aren't finished yet, but it's never finished, is it? We learn every day, there's things that happen every day, and we need the time to rethink. To rethinking. Rethinking is critical, it's normal. And especially now that our old normal is gone. We're not gonna return to what was, we have been changed forever. If you were ever wondering if you could change, yes, you can, because we have been changed forever by this. And we have seen this, I think, even more this week. There's been lots to read and lots to see about 9-11, hasn't there? I kind of submerged myself into it again, especially because I lived in Brooklyn for 9-11, and that's where we were. And the first, I said this last Sunday, but the, the first plane went over my former husband's head, and when he got to work, he watched the second plane go into the towers. Um, we watched, you know, the fall of them on, lost a, a firefighter friend of mine in that, um, and just forever changed by what happened. Uh, last week, I recommended the show Generation 9-11 for you on PBS. Um, they were kids whose fathers were killed in, um, in 9-11 and to see what life now looks like to them. I also submerged myself into two hours of frontline 
I'm tough, aren't I? Yep. Um, but that's good because they were talking about what's the effects of 9-11 now. And we've all thought, uh, you know, we've all lived this. You know, now that the kids are out, I can say, we've all lived this. You know, they're the only ones here that, that, were under, that are under 20. But the opening picture is what really caught me for this. It was all the elected federal officials, or most of them, standing on the steps of the Capitol on the evening of 9-11 of in 2001, singing together, God Bless America. And the next, they split the picture, and on the other one was the scene from January 6 of this year. We need to rethink so much. And the question for ourselves in, in light of 9-11 is, did we rethink anything after 9-11? We're really questioning ourselves that as a country, aren't we, right now? as we just got out of Afghanistan in an incredibly messy way, but possibly the only way. Have, what have we learned? Did we rethink or did we just keep reacting? Did we let this idea of being afraid of this war on terror rule our lives and keep us in a reactive mode so that we didn't rethink? We need to rethink. We have not learned all the lessons that we need. And if we don't rethink, because rethinking and stopping and doing that is about context, is about seeing a bigger context in which everything is in. And if we just react, we lose context, context don't we? Because we just think of it, what's right in front of us. That's what reaction is. But we are people of long views. That's what people of faith are. That's what everybody actually is. But we commit ourselves to that as people of faith. That we're gonna be about stories that are from so long ago and we're gonna keep reading them to ourselves. You know, the words that we read this morning are ancient. And we're gonna also think about life to come. Life here to come and what that means and, and how that affects us. And we're going to be rethinking over the next six weeks, um, rethinking creation, rethinking what we think about God and about others and some key things in this. But this week is for getting ready. You know, we've done a lot of getting ready. Roger and I kept walking through the sanctuary saying, what, are, what have we gotten used to seeing here that shouldn't be here? <laughs> that was a big getting ready. And still this morning, I still found another box of stuff that needed to come out. <laughs> we have to prepare ourselves to rethink things because rethinking is a little scary. In a way, it could be saying to ourselves, what we thought before was not good. And that's not the, re the preparation that I want. I want a preparation to absorb the new. I have a couple of goals for the next couple of years, as if I don't have enough to do. But I want to learn how to dye yarn. Um, and like I need more yarn in my life, but I still want to learn how to dye yarn. And so I've been watching a little bit, you know, I've been watching what they do. And one, the thing that you have to do before you you, you get to the color, because we all want to get to color and see what it's going to be, right? Is you have to what they call scour the yarn. And that doesn't mean that you get out a scrub brush and do this. It means you boil the heck out of it. Because sheep are greasy. They got this stuff on them called lanolin. They are one greasy mess. And if you don't get all of that off the yarn, it's not, no color is going to go in. And so you do that, and you do it a few times, and you empty your water, and you start again. And you don't want soap on it, because that will um, also stick to it. So you have to do this hard process of just washing it in very hot water again and again, so that it's ready, so that those fibers are open, all those pores on those fibers are open and ready to take it. That's what we need to do. We need to prepare ourselves, not saying what was was bad, because let me tell you, that the sheep needed that lanolin, right? But now it's time for something new, and so we need it. And wouldn't it be nice if we rethink 
You know, you know how when you need to do a new project or something, you have to like mark it out on your calendar and you have to tell people, I need three hours all to myself. I just really need to focus on this, right? You can't have these constant interruptions. You really, really need to focus. We're gonna give ourselves that time to focus on this and try not to distract ourselves. I'm checking the screen here. My little sister is not on, so I can tell a story about it, right? Last week I told something that my mother said, and my mother's like, well, I'm gonna have to be careful from now on, right? But my little sister's not on, so we're good. But when we were young, we had to do the dishes. And as I found out, children these days don't know what that means. They think it means loading the dishwasher. And as I've said before, we had dishwashers. My mother said we had four dishwashers, Cindy, Chrissy, Sherry, and Kurt, right? And my little sister, every time it was her turn, she was nowhere to be found. And I mean, she was little. She picked us up by the time she was like five years old. We had to start early on this. And she always found something to do. And you had to often, you know, she had to go to the bathroom right? And we knock, I, oh, you had these problems too with your kids? Yeah. And we'd knock on the door, I'm busy. I'm like, what are you doing, writing a novel in there? You know, she could just extend that time. Just so, and, and she always had to do the dishes. She would just make the, the dryer, whoever was drying, a little mad because, because she wasn't there. She was avoiding, right? And we're good at avoiding, aren't we? It's amazing the things that we get done when we're avoiding something else, isn't it? That's how my laundry and my dishes get done, is because I'm avoiding something else. Yeah, oh, that's a big one. Big yeses on that one, y'all. Yeah, yeah. But we have to choose to do this, to rethink, because that's the only way we won't repeat some of this. And there is stuff in here, y'all, that we don't need to repeat, do we? So we have to prepare ourselves. And we've got two prep scriptures for us this morning. The first one, of course, is uh, um, the, the, the one that we sing for the Messiah, comfort, comfort my people. But that it, that's starts with comfort and it moves to like this pep rally, doesn't it, for all of us. And then the second, of course, is Moses talking to the people also and getting tough with them. Like Moses is like, all right, I'm dying. This is easy. Listen, people, two choices, life and death. What'll it be, right? But it's hard work. Our journey has been a journey just like the people that Moses was leading. They left a place that they knew and they had to leave it quickly. Think about that. Remember, they had to like get out of Dodge as fast as they could, right? We did too. There were lots of unknowns. They didn't trust their leaders. Mm. They worshiped false idols. They longed for previous days. They were given food and water for the journey, the thing they need, even though they didn't always recognize it. Remember their response to manna? Well, they called it manna. What's this? And here they are now, standing at the edge, ready to go into something that's promised and unfamiliar. Isn't this the journey of our lives? The journey of life that we repeat again and again. And the question is, what do we learn each time? Are we willing to even acknowledge we've done this journey, or do we just say, no, no, we're right at the place where we've always been? The good news and the best news in reading these stories is that God never gives up on us. Never, never. We have been through a big journey now, and we're preparing for a new phase. And so we have to rethink things. The people in our story did not know how to be a settled people. They had gotten used to being a journey to whatever you need to do, you just find the, the food on the ground and the water comes out of rocks and, and you just kind of make it up and it's, you know, we're living in tents and all this kind of stuff that can be moved. But they needed something different now. And I love that this scripture starts with those words. The word is very near to you. It's in your mouth and your hearts. I like that. I like that's a good place to start. That the words and answers we need are not secrets to discover. We don't, for that, this piece, need an expert. Uh, Ron Heifetz says you need an expert 10% of your life 
and you need to do the hard emotional work for the other 90% of your life. Most of the time we want experts to tell us what to do, 90% of the time and only do a little work about 10. We know where we need experts right now in the vaccines, in the, the progression of COVID and things like that. The rest of the work is ours. It's about us. It's about living together and the new ways that we need to be together, whether that's because of 9-11 or the pandemic or whatever it is, the answers that we need are in our hearts. They're in our mouths and our hearts. And it is about our heart choices right now. The only thing that we can control is our heart choices, aren't they? We can't control anybody else. We're starting to wish we could, right? <laughs> but we can't. And set before us is the most fundamental things, life and death, blessing and curse. Now, y'all know I don't particularly like binary options. I always think there's more than two. But when you get to the most elemental, it does come down to life and death, blessing and curse. And we need to make that choice first. Are we going to be about life? And it seems like the easy, oh, it's so clear. Yeah, of course we're about life. No, 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 no. We often don't choose things that say this is about life. Now, once we've chosen life, it gets hard after that. Things get fuzzy, things get relative, which is okay. And that's where we get to rethink things. But to prepare, we need to be clear about our basic choice. Are we going to choose life? But choosing life is not easy because it's not just about breathing or not breathing or is your heart beating or is it not beating. It even says that the people struggle with this. Their hearts have turned away. They don't listen. They bow down and serve other gods. And it says that they're not going to die. Did you see that, that word that we don't use very often? We're, they're going to perish. And I think it's really interesting that that's the word that's used. It's not that you're going to have a bodily death. It's that we're going to perish. And I looked up perish, and the first one is, of course, you, you know, death. But, but the, perish, the word that I think of with perish, with an E, not an A, is when you suffer complete ruin or destruction, there's rot or decay. Another definition of it is to suffer spiritual, your spiritual health suffers. And the root of the word means to go through or to spend fully so you have nothing left. That's perishing. It's not sudden death, it's rot from within. The proverb, there's a proverb that even says, without vision, people perish. We need to make room to rethink, to see the new way that life is and the ways that we need to be and to choose life in all of that. So how do you prepare? We choose, we're, compare, we're, we're confronted with this choice of choosing life, but how do we do this? Well, how about if we get rid of what no longer serves? What no longer serves us. You think about that, and that puts us in a very vulnerable position, doesn't it? It's hard. You know, uh, one which no longer serves, which is probably not coming back, is hymn books here, right? I mean, I know, for some people, they're actually heavy to hold. I'm to that point, and the light in here is so lousy, I can't even, you know, I blow my whole bulletin up to see it most of the time, right? And, uh, hymn books don't serve us anymore. They are a compilation of hymns that were put together 10 years before the publication date of the hymn, hymn book, right? And I'm seeing one here. I don't know how one got loose. Um, well, we put them away at the beginning. Remember at the beginning when we all thought, you know, we couldn't touch anything either? I'm trying to look. Lots of additional. Oh, that's right. In this one, they don't actually have a publication date. 
I worked really hard because they self-published and I couldn't find one before. But when did we get these? 80s, 90s? When? 90s. So if we're lucky, these are the hymns that people thought were important in the 80s. Not were probably published in the 80s, just they liked during. So this is probably a history of hymns in the 50s, 60s, and maybe the 70s. Does that serve us anymore? I don't want to sing hymns from that. Some of them are good, but there's so many more that we can. And I know people like to hold those hymnals sometimes, but I don't think it serves us. It doesn't let us be flexible anymore. Vulnerability. We can no longer rely on what was, and we have to enter into the territory that is about uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. Thank you, Brene Brown. Right? Uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure doesn't quite go with comfort, comfort my people, does it? Rethinking asks us to do this, not to run and hide or go la 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 and stick our fingers in our ears, right? But to take risks, to live into that uncertainty and to have an emotional exposure. Rethinking and rethinking, preparing and vulnerability is totally necessary. And in these weeks that are gonna follow, we're gonna feel very vulnerable as we examine what no longer works for us in our ideas about God, ideas about creation, and ideas about others, and therefore ourselves. But I want you to remember one important thing and we see it in the Isaiah passage, the comfort, comfort my people. It's actually in the third pa um, paragraph or the, the third set of, uh, um, of, of uh, verses there. First we start with comfort, right? That's the first one. And then that question comes. They're told to cry out and they say, what should I cry? Have you ever been in that place? You don't even know what to ask. You don't even know what to cry out. And then when you hear the, probably um, this conversation of the, the prophet here, Isaiah, saying, you know, I'd cry out, but why bother? These people are like grass. Do you hear he calls the people grass? You know? That's not a compliment, just in case you were wondering, okay? He, he's given up. Isaiah's just about given up. And then he's told what to do get you up to a high mountain. I like, get your rear end up to the high mountain, right? Get up there. Herald of good tidings, name is changed. You are now herald of good tidings. Herald with an E, not an A-R, right? Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, again. Get up there, and here is your God. The joy that is present in those acts and those words is amazing. The joy is saying we are not alone. God is always with us. Our biggest fear in life is that we're alone. We're alone as we go to die, that people are gonna leave us alone, that no one loves us, which is being alone, right? And this passage says, no, you are never alone. Joy is living and proclaiming is what we see, and that is the work that we need to do and helps us be vulnerable. Brene Brown, I, I was in the car and I happened to hear her. You know, she, someone was interviewing her and I'm like, just when I need you, Brene, thanks. You know, but she's, you know what the most vulnerable emotion is? How many would vote for um, sadness? Uh, apathy? Fear, disgust, guess what's the most vulnerable emotion? Love, close, joy. You know why joy is the most vulnerable emotion? Because we refuse to say, I've got a plan. If I just think about the worst thing that'll happen, I'll be okay. Joy is saying, I'm not going with the worst thing. I am going with joy. And that makes you very vulnerable because how many other people 
will say, oh, you're not thinking about that. You're not thinking. You should be thinking about this. You should be doing this. Why aren't you doing this, right? They want to bring you to a place. Put that in your mind for this week, that joy is your most vulnerable emotion. And to get to joy, she says the one thing that people who do vulnerable well have in common, she thought it was going to be their spiritual life. It's not. It's gratitude. We can do these two things, folks. Joy and gratitude, we can do this. To prepare ourselves to be vulnerable for this next piece that we have to think and do, we've got these two tools. We have joy. And we know how to do gratitude, don't we? It's about doing it. And we need to, to heat it up. If you think about that uh, the yarn sitting in the, uh, in the bucket of uh, very hot water that's getting heated up again and again, we need to heat up the gratitude, right? We need to scour out all of the, the armor that we put there so that we, we don't have to be vulnerable and we don't have to rethink and we don't have to do all this. Let's just heat it up with gratitude. Get rid of what stands in the way because this is what we have to hear. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying God, holding fast to God, for that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that God swore to your ancestors and to us. And to us, it's not a land. It's a place together to be the community of God. Let's heat it up. Let's be vulnerable with joy so that we're prepared to rethink in these new days. Let's pray. God, help us be ready. It has been react and react and react and we want the breath. And we think the breath often is just to do nothing. Let me do nothing. But God says, no, I've got good work for you. Good work. Good work so that you can choose life every day. God, let us be your good work, people of joy and gratitude. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you, Eric. And let's stand if you're able, um, and let's join in. I want to be ready. Um, Allie's up here because if you look in your, uh, at the music, it says leader. Um, once we sing this refrain, she'll sing that part, and we are the response then, and then also the, uh, the chorus, all right? Pentecost. 
Pentecost. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. He was endowed with the Holy Ghost. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. Walk in Jerusalem just like John. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John. All right, you may be seated. Thank you. One of our new ways to do things is to do offering in a different way. To at least when we're in the sanctuary, do offering in a different way. The, the offering plates are in the three places there, and you're welcome to deposit your offering there um, af- before and after worship. I know many of you send it in. You can, um, instructions are in the bulletin, how to get to the website and hit the please give button. We're doing this differently now, so we don't have people move, uh, move about everywhere among. What hasn't changed, though, is what we do with it. We may give in different ways, but we then turn around and give it in ways that we have with open hearts, always looking for new places to. As I gave somebody a gift card for $25 to Hannaford this week, and there were tears in their eyes because this was just gonna get them over the hump, I thought, how little we can do and how big of an impact it can. This is what we do together, little by little, and we are a part of people's lives. Let's give together. Loving God, for the blessings that these gifts have been in our lives, for the things that we've learned by earning them, by how they came to us, maybe from others. And God, too, from the call that comes with these resources that we have, the call from you to say, all right, now what you gonna do? God, send us out with these these gifts that are yours in so many ways. All this we ask in your name, amen. If you're standing, you may be seated. We're gonna begin the congregational prayers, the prayers of the people um, for a series of weeks now um, with different prayers like this. Um, this is a much longer prayer that we're gonna use in pieces, thinking of different people that are, um, have had to be refugees and are immigrants around the world. Um, we'll intersperse with other things too. We have other Sundays coming up. Um, I know the last Sunday of the month we're going to, this is actually National Recovery Month. I didn't know that until last week. Um, so the last, week, uh, the last Sunday of this month we're going to re- remember and celebrate people in recovery also. But we'll begin today with people of Afghanistan as together we read these words responsively and hold them in our hearts. Let us pray together. And if you'll begin with the bold type. We gather with gratitude for the earth and all who journey in it we give thanks for the interconnectedness of all creation. We 
We declare openly the times we have fallen short from living out the call to justice our sacred stories place upon us. From seeing the harm our way of life and our policies inflict upon creation, hear our confession and our prayers. And God, indeed, we do keep the people of Afghanistan in our hearts today as those who have made the journey and continue the journey now to find a new place to live, those who have put their lives on the line so that we may know freedom. God, may they know a freedom, even as they've had to leave country and family and what they've known behind. God, may we be generous as we call them neighbor, as we call them beloved, as you do. God, remind us as we do that with the people of Afghanistan to do it with those folks who live right around us, with whom we have been living for so long, those who are, who call this place home. God, let us not push any away. Let us not ask whether someone deserves to be here, whether they have the right to stand on ground on which they stand. God, forgive us as a people for supporting institutions and policies that keep people away that keep them at a distance as others, that see them as a threat. God, forgive us for our racism. God, forgive us for our prejudice. And not just in words that we say, forgive us, change us, God. Work in our hearts, tug at us again and again so that we may rid ourselves of that separation from them and from you. And on this day, God, as we have just passed yesterday, as we remember that 20 years ago, this was the day after an event that we still have a hard time believing happened. God, we pray for those who lost loved ones, those who lost their health in helping. And God, we pray, too, that we work harder, that we don't just believe what is easy, but we rethink because we have learned, we have seen. May we come and become a people that lay down our burdens and the weapons of war, that come to the water that is you, that share water that is very life with others. God, teach us to be your people of creative peace now and always. And God, we also ask and speak the names in our hearts of those beloveds that we know, of mothers and friends and spouses, of children who are struggling so much with health of body and mind and spirit, Be with each of them on the path that they take, some to recovery and some to a time when their their life on this place ends. But God, may we walk with them. May we honor that journey that they are on. God, you have given us each other as gifts. Let us value and celebrate. And we celebrate our children today as they're they're back within us. We thank you for their liveliness and their enthusiasm, for the things that they teach us and the ways that they have open hearts to learn. God, be with them and their teachers and staff as each day is difficult, and yet as they rethink and learn anew. Be with us too, God, as we open our hearts as we express our gratitude for all that is possible around and within us. And hear us now as we join our voices together 
and we pray the prayer through which you continue to teach us. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, parent of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of this world, your heavenly will be done by all created beings, your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and tests, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. And let's join together in our final hymn for this day, Take My Life and Let It Be. together in the many ways that we do has now sent us into the world. Let us go, for God's love is always with us, and the joy of God is ours to share. Amen.
Do you guys know that song? Um, no, it's uh, from Carol Burnett. I'm so glad we had this time together. Uh, 